This is Pace the Nation. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Pace the Nation Broadcasting. Back here at Studio 1A in downtown Arlington, Virginia. We are in the heart of all things here in Clarendon. This is episode 280 of Pace the Nation. I'm Chris Farley. Alongside me, also in Clarendon, but not in studio, is my wife, co-host Julie Cully. Julie, what's up? Hey, I had to create my own studio, so <laughs> you are you are in a a kind of a, a co working space right in Clarendon. Yeah, basically right say. above you. Right so. above where where we are broadcast, right above Studio One A. Uh, one of these days, we'll be able to figure out how to do it in in person together because you literally well, are. We drove over together to the. We drove over together. We went today. to separate spots. Base, we're in the same building essentially, yeah. but. Yep. You know, there's two two things here. Number one, uh, we have to figure out how to do the recording in the same room at the same mm-hmm. time. Correct. And number two, you have to clean the room so that I can stand <laughs> coming into the room. I think I think cleaning the room's got to be first. That's the first <laughs> agenda item. I, I will get to that. That's uh, the least likely agenda item to happen. So. It's like I, I angle the camera so no one can really see yeah, it looks the, great from the there. fire that's going on around <laughs> us here. Uh, you know, it's like that meme where the dog's like everything is fine and the fire is, is surrounding <laughs> them. That's my studio. Um, anyways, excited to have you. We, we haven't done a show together in weeks, if not months. Oh. Um, so I'm sure the audience has been, uh, ha- has been wondering where you've been. Um, how's it been going? Where you been? What have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? Um, I have been holding down the fort so that you can continue <laughs> all of the, the travel. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and travel, travel around the country. You can do your thing, and uh, I can pretend to work and basically take care of our family. Yes, so and you I'm call just, it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just behind the scenes. I'm behind you, the scenes, recording the show. It, the you, you call it. You call it the all about me tour. The all it about is. Chris it continues. Farley tour. It's the all about Chris in, Farley tour. I was in Seattle uh, this week uh, at your place of work at Brooks. I was in France. Uh, where, where, where haven't I been? Uh, you know, so uh, I appreciate Boston, you. I, I, Richmond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, I, I could yeah, go I, on. Would you like me I, to go on? I officially uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate your support. Um, but, officially. Thank you. Yeah. Just for the record. So anyways, well, we, we have, um, we got a couple stories I want to share, but let's get to our guest. Really excited about our, our next guest. Um, this this podcast will come out here Monday. Uh, so we are recording here on a Friday, the seventh. So we'll come out Monday, the 10th. And on Monday, the 10th, we will have a, a great new story on runpacers.com. It's story number six. Uh, and the story is called Cooper. And these stories are, you know, they're short films. We call, we call them short films. And this one I think was, was really well done. We're going to have uh, the filmmaker, I, I, I want to call him a film. He's got his own production company, but uh, you know, he is, he's, he's does a lot of other things and I'm excited to talk to him about this film that he just put out. Johnny Pace is going to join us. He's of Pace Productions um, put together. He's put together a couple films for us, including the Drew, Drew and Joan Hunter film, but you know, he, he is not coming from a traditional background of film school or anything like that, but he does awesome, awesome work. Uh, he was just a guy, you and I knew him as a high school runner here in the area, ran for Virginia. And then, you know, he's got a real job and he makes films on the side and uh, really just good dude. So excited to talk to Johnny. Um, and uh, he, he's, he's got a lot going on. I don't know how he, he figures it all out, but we're going to ask him all that and more. So next up from Pace Productions, Johnny Pace joins us here on Pace the Nation. Pace the Nation is brought to you by Pacers Running Stores. 
Pacers has five stores in Northern Virginia and DC. For the best running footwear, apparel, and gear, just stop by or schedule a virtual fitting with the best running experts in the business. Pacers Running exists to help as many people as possible through running. For every run, it's Pacers Running. All right, welcome back to the program. And now, Julie, we are excited to be joined by a friend of ours who does amazing work in the film space. It's Johnny Pace. Johnny, how are you? Welcome I'm, to the show. I'm doing fantastic, Chris. It's great to be here. Thank you for uh, oh, thank thanks you for, for having me on. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, really Look excited this, about this Virginia Fest. Here. I know it oh, is. Hush. Right, go Yes. <laughs> Uh, really excited about story six, the Cooper uh, film that that's coming out. We'll get to, to, to talking about that. Yeah. Um, but as Julie said, it is a Virginia fest. So um, as we were just talking before you came on officially here, um, you were Wahoo. Now tell me, because but before you were Wahoo, remind me how you and I first met. Right. Um yeah, I mean, before I, before I was a Wahoo, I was a, a Westfield High School, you know, student and runner and stud runner, solid runner. Thank you. And to, to me, the earliest I remember meeting you, it was at one of the Pacers events. It was this the, the highlight of the season. Frankly, it was such a well done meet. It was the DCXC uh, cross country yep. um, race. Me? I think you guys started in maybe 2013 and yep you got it look at that good yeah. um yeah and just the way the level of production i remember I, I used to have it behind me and i think i just it's downstairs now but you guys printed out um like posters for kind of the the, the runners to watch and yep. had it had like the it was a big race bib printout and just top-notch event and anyways the race went well for me i was uh i kind of came onto the running scene i started making really good progress senior year. And I think that DCXC meet was a, was a highlight. And we met that night after the race and you said, um, Oh, like I'm actually, I'm, I'm going down to, um, to get dinner with, with the, with some Virginia alums down in Charlottesville. And I could put you in touch with the, uh, with the coach there and to Look at that. Know, open that door. And, and here we are. I mean, I, I, I give you credit for, for, for starting those conversations. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, yep. Oh, so man. I put, I put him in touch with Pete Watson. <laughs> hey, Julie, you weren't at Georgetown at the time, so I would have put him in touch with you, but you weren't <laughs> hey. at Georgetown. I've, I've been at Georgetown since I got to DC. My uh, gosh. Yeah, that, that must have slipped his mind. <laughs> I slipped my mind. <laughs> oh, it slips his mind very easily. Yeah. So, uh, you're a Wahoo, uh, have great, uh, four to five seasons running there. Um, your path, uh, you actually kind of, you, you got a degree in, management consult uh, in management right so you are also currently a management consultant for a big company right while you're That's doing right. all this film work tell me yeah. about your day tell me about your day job yeah sure um yeah the last i'm coming up on two years um i've been doing management consulting um which for me was a great path i i tried out investment banking and as a runner i remember trying to do the summer training while they're you know, expecting us to work 80 hours, a hundred hours. I mean, all these bankers do is live and breathe finance. And yep. that's great. Like I respect it. I really do. And for, but for me as a, like a runner and somebody who has other interests, that wasn't for me. So um, I got that clarity and realized consulting was, was the path I wanted. And mostly because it's, it's really a continued learning. You, there's people who ask, what is a consultant? And there really is no easy answer because that could mean so many things. And that's why I chose it because you can, it, it's problem solving and it's, it's really companies coming to my firm and saying, help us do this complex thing. We don't know how to do it and we'll let you take the reins. And so that looks like all sorts of things. And to me, it was like, I'm going to be having all these new learning opportunities, taking on new challenges. There's not going to be the same job every single yep. day and every month to month and that's what appealed to me about it so um yeah so for the last two years i've been i've been doing that the the quality of life is fantastic it's i'm learning way you work more. a lot you work all the time yeah and, uh, on both that and your and your production company 
when when did the production stuff become an interest? I mean, you must have been yeah. interested in cameras and pictures and all that stuff throughout your life, correct? And did you get your first gig through <laughs> Brooks? <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I, I, yeah. good, good right, I'm glad you let's, mentioned Let's that. pull me into this a little bit here. We're going to make this all about Chris Farley and Johnny Case. <laughs> right, right. No, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's actually a great point. So um, to me, there was this frustration. I never could get my hands on like a great camera. Like I was always so frustrated. You know, I'm just a kid. So I, we would try and sometimes we'd, I just never was satisfied with like whatever cameras I was using. And I didn't get to really do what in my mind I, I wanted. I would dabble in photography and video. Um, I, but it would be like so touch and go, you know, once or twice a year. And it wasn't something, it was something I wanted to do, but didn't have the resources to even know where to begin. Um, and it was two years ago, um, post grad school, COVID had had kind of kicked into full swing and I'm talking with some of my teammates and we planned this trip out to Boulder and um, that's where things for me really started and Julie you'll you'll know very well Spencer Brown uh, was part of that trip and um, Spencer Brown changing lives yeah he really is <laughs> shout out and Spencer had that coveted nice camera mm -hmm. and um, he obviously Spencer big YouTube uh, audience and channel and at the time I was dealing with um, an Achilles issue. So I wasn't full training. And so I was like, all right, let me pick up this camera. Um, and the crazy thing with Spencer was that we immediately could get feedback on these videos. So I started making videos with Spencer that summer out in Boulder. And, and there's a lot of, it's just a, it's a great venue to, to make, to make content. And the people that were there was just, it was so uplifting and exciting. And the feedback was, you know, we had people watching it instantly. And so rather than spending years trying to, you know, make, get into the space, it was like immediately people were responding positively. And I was like, wow, like this is something I have a knack for. Like I want to keep it going. And, um, but yeah, that's how it started. It was literally. So was it your dream to have a production company on the side? Was that something you thought about in college or as a kid, or it just, it just kind of came organically like it, that? It came organically. I, I, like I said, I would dabble in it, but just um, it never seemed like something that I would pursue like with with the way I have. Um, I would do I, I used to like my one I would do like one project a year. Like I would make a I'd run for class president in high school or middle school and go all out. And then I wouldn't touch it for the rest of the year. But um, this running, this sports oriented uh you know, media has really, yeah, it's really been something that came organically, came by chance um, and just meeting the right people at the right time. And yeah, so, I mean, for the next couple of months, like finally got my own camera and then went to Albuquerque where Brooks uh, was doing their winter training camp. And that was, we could call that the kickoff of the, of the company because I, I was, was shooting around. Henry Wynn is, is a good friend of mine and a former teammate. And um, you know, that was really all it was, was just taking photos for, for friends. And Spencer was obviously on the team at the time and, um, it turned out good. And Brooks, uh, well, I guess, Julie, you were, you were the one we spoke with. Um, and I know Brooks needed, you know, there was a bit of a gap as far as, mm -hmm. you know, being able to photograph these people doing awesome stuff. And so, uh, that, that kind of got me going and, so and that jump starts your career yeah. and, and the, the official name of the, the the your business is is it johnny pace photo and video what's what's the name of your company i should get that. Pace, well pace photo um, pace photo okay pace photo is what my account's called and that's what people usually and pace is your real name because that's a really good name for running you know when <laughs> when i got into the sport i, I went over to the, the legal the legal <laughs> office and said you know we got to change some stuff. yeah, yeah you got john it. smith but that was yeah, too it wasn't boring, working. So. yeah. all right Johnny so the, the real the real question well, is who would, uh, go ahead go ahead julie go ahead no no i just i actually wanted to take it back to johnny's story because um what made what he was doing so significant at the time and you touched on it a little bit but there was no one doing this this was fall of 2020 um, so, uh, you know, I had just started at Brooks. I couldn't get, no one was going on the field, like out in the field to take pictures at the time. Like there was just right. still so much hesitation 
of travel. No one wanted to get in front of the athletes or even asked to get in front of the athletes for fear of giving them COVID. So Johnny kind of found this like niche, right? Cause we, we needed photography. He was still kind of hanging out with his buddies. And at the same time you had a remote position. I don't know if you're still working remotely, but you were traveling all around. I mean, I remember yeah. you, you might've even gone down <laughs> to Texas for a little bit and then you came yep. back up to Albuquerque and there was all this. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you're honest with me about this. Cause I remember <laughs> being like, Johnny, I need you, like, I want to pay you, but you have to be a vendor. I don't know if you had a business yet. <laughs> no. So I think, I think we, like, we literally in that transaction, it was like, okay, I got to build an LLC. That's right. And, and then th that's how we were able to first reimburse um, to kind of get things going. So I think that was really cool because at the time, no one was really able to. It was just like friends and the team learned to trust you. So it was just yeah. easy to have them come out to practices. All right. You win. You're more influential in his yeah. success than I was. Yeah. You're, you're right. no, um, so, yeah. so, so sorry, you, Johnny. You, you, I'm sorry. We didn't preface you with the fact that when we, when we invite people to the show, yeah. we, right. we really are trying to like meet with like yeah. who knows yeah. them better yeah. and right. who, who they like more. So, That's right. Sorry you so, got caught so, in the mix. So it, it, so you build this this LLC and this company. How do you even know what the heck to charge? Do oh you know? Gosh. That's the, that is the question. That is the question. Well, Spencer was probably like, "Uh, Brooks is a lot of money, so just yeah. ask for whatever." Yeah, yeah. You right. Want. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, a lot of my work has been with friends, and what I'm charging there is is the yeah. definitely the friends and family, friends and family discount. discount, the hundred yeah. percent friends and family discount. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, as you start to work with uh, companies and they're asking, what is your rate? Like, that's something you have to to put some thought into. And like, um, that's it's been cool. Like trying to figure that out because there is there is this curve, right? You can the the quality you can push something out. You can take the camera, the photos straight off your phone or the camera and send them off. Or you could, and there's a, as I've learned, there's a lot of um, back end that gets that, that can make the quality just go up and up and with videos even more so um so really that it's, it really comes down to like that time and how much time you can the, you can put into it yeah. making it as good as possible and so um yeah i mean i'm still figuring it out to be honest yeah I mean, but it's a real business i mean don't get me wrong for anybody listening you are for hire and you do amazing work check yeah. out the latest uh story six on runpacers.com you'll find it also on uh johnny's uh, his, his Instagram and other channels. You have any other Instagram is where you put out most of your stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's, so, that's where I found the best. So, to, so you can share. you can check him out on Instagram at Pace Photo. Um, he's got all his stuff there. Uh, so we're really excited about this video. And we'll talk about that in a second. Julie has another question though. Sorry. No, I know, and I'm probably uh, jumping the conversation here, but it's been two years, but the evolution mm -hmm. has been awesome, right? Thank so. You. Yeah. We, I know Chris and I were so excited to like see you in the stadium this summer and oh like gosh, down right? on the ground and, and taking absolutely amazing shots. I mean, it, it's just been a really fun journey for, again, bringing it back to us, for yeah. us to be a part of with you too. Yeah. So I, really I, well, I, I, I really do truly appreciate you. So both of you so much for, for the roles you've played in that, in that journey. And it, it is so true. And it, it did culminate in such a, magic uh you know spring and summertime you know with with everything going on in oregon and having the opportunity to to go out and shoot at um prefontaine usa's and then worlds totally unexpected like just it one thing continued to lead to another and and to really be there my dream was always to to make it to oregon and hayward field and mm -hmm. um to have that on that professional level access to to shoot these historic, <laughs> I mean, it's the first time the U S had hosted the world championships for track. Um, and to be yep. front, front row capturing it to me, that's the most fun way to enjoy it. So, so let's uh, talk about that. I, 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 and that, that was pretty amazing for you to get credentialed and be this official right. videographer, photographer there at these three amazing events at, and Eugene, um, and you can, and again, uh, folks who, who don't know who Cooper Tier is or don't know Johnny or don't know anything about Worlds or Prefontaine or USA's, yeah. check out the video. It gives you some really good context. Um, but to get credentialed at a Diamond League meet, which is the top of the top of, of the sport of track and field, 
how, how do you even, how do you go about that? How do you even right. do that for Prefontaine back in June when you, um, when you're able to do that? It was either, it was it June or July when you first May, I think the very end okay. of May okay. or end very May. early June. Gotcha. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so your credential there, how does that, how did you, how does that even happen? Yeah. I mean, it, again, it's one, it's the chain reaction. So, uh, I put together this portfolio with working with Spencer, working with my really good friend, Ari, who was part of that initial Boulder trip and who started his own channel and kind of built this portfolio, just traveling around, having fun with it, like really expecting nothing of it. But, you know, looking back, it's stuff that people really enjoyed. And so Sidious Magazine, um, which is a big running, they do such yep. great stuff for uh, running coverage. Um, and they had this program that they are pioneering and they picked a handful of up and coming they, they're help. They wanted up and coming content creators, people who are telling the story of the sport, trying to help build uh, engagement with with track and field and running um, in new they, ways. They do, they do a great job. They were on Pace Nation episode two fifty eight, so you can check them out when <laughs> they were on our show. You but got yes, the number we, down. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there, right there. <laughs> so, nice. but 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 so so they were able to. They had a program which you could get credentialed and be at this big meet. Is that yep. effectively how it happened? Effectively, yes. I mean, there's several weeks of uh, learning about the space and then culminating in this in-person trip to Prefontaine Classic, which is yeah, Diamond League meet, preeminent, one of the biggest normal season track meets in America um, and in the world. Like it's it's a it's a big deal, and they really went out of their way to to get us there and get us on the field and just part of the conversation and it's funny you know as we walk in you see everybody else is probably had two decades on <laughs> on us and just to see that youth infusion and kind of these new uh perspectives and um on the sport was really neat and it was supposed to end there there was no promise of anything beyond mm -hmm. that um and it went so well. And I guess the, 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 the higher ups, whoever was making the decisions that with USA's and worlds, like the feedback was so positive with Prefontaine that they were like, all right, we can get you in for USA's. And at the time I was in, I was on the other side of the world. I was in Spain uh, going, um, doing some summer travel and yeah. we find out we get USA uh, credentials. And so I, book book uh 20 hours of, of flights to get get to off get this over backpacking to... tour and let's go yeah. back to the states i mean yeah. totally unexpected and um yeah and then uh worlds was was even better and so it was, it was just a magic magic uh series of months and um and and so cooper you you and i had a discussion uh, probably but right before pre it, you had this awesome opportunity you were thinking, how could we bring Pacers into it, which I really appreciate. Yeah. And we talked about Cooper um, and we mm. talked about highlighting him. And I think it was it, it turned out, again, amazing story. Check it out. Run Pacers dot com. Pace photo on Instagram. You can find that that awesome nine minute movie. Um, did you know Cooper beforehand? Like, how were yeah. you able to get such good access? And you guys seem to really have a good conversation, although you're not in the video. You have a good, really good conversation with him. Yeah. Well, I, I going back, I want to give you credit because I called you up and we were talking, you know, after this Drew Hunter video came out about what we could work on next. And you, you said, I have this feeling like he's not the, uh, he's not the clear favorite, but I, I just had this feeling about this guy Cooper that I think he's going to do something pretty special. We yeah. We had him on episode two uh, sixty nine. So I really, after talking to him, I thought, man, you know, so episode two sixty nine yeah. of Pace the Nation, check that out as well. <laughs> And, you know, Chris, you, you seem to have your finger on the pulse. And, and when you said that, I was like, you know, I, I'm down. I, I think there might be something here. So scorecard uh, two to one, Julie. That was okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> Just back this up. This is the one athlete that he recorded with over the last <laughs> eight months that was competing at this championship. So he's just like, my man, Cooper, this, yeah. my man Cooper, my I'm man Cooper, my man Cooper. I'm like, oh him. my gosh. I'm like, yeah. well, he is yeah. actually pretty good. I don't know if you watched his season right. in 2020. It wasn't just my interview that really or spurred him on. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> no, Cooper's clearly an amazing, phenomenal athlete, yeah. but um, there was a degree, you know, he, there's a lot of great, great runners. Absolutely. You never know. There's no um, guarantees that he's going to make the, the, the world team. That's for sure. That's for sure. And so, you know, we went in and started filming him before the USA championships at this pre-classic and, um, 
lo and behold, well, we don't want to spoil it necessarily, yeah, but yeah, you have yeah, to yeah, watch exactly. and see that things kind of pan out the way you yeah. anticipated they would. Um, but yeah, going back to, to Cooper and I, I mean, it, it's crazy how much came from that initial summer two years ago. So we, that summer in Boulder, every, you know, all these college kids have been uh, locked up for a few months and mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like every, anybody who knew how to run congregated in Boulder and was kind of re-socializing through these group runs. And um, that's where I first met him. I think the Oregon team was, was out in Boulder that summer. And so, um, yeah, that's where the, the relationship kind of started. And, and that, that was cool. Just like with Drew, just having that baseline kind of relationship ahead of time made it more enjoyable, at least uh, hopefully made it more comfortable for, for our people. And we were featuring, like, I think, that's something I've always enjoyed about the work I do is that it, usually there's a relationship beforehand rather than some, yeah. you know, create some production company. And I've seen that, you know, with Tin Man, like they, they, these teams would come in and yep. they didn't really know each other and they'd be trying to get this content and that's fine. It's very commercial. It's, they do good work, but like I've really enjoyed having those relationships, at least a, just a prior level of comfort that, um, seems to open up for for more authentic experiences and content and so yeah um that's kind of the story so yeah. cooper i thought you know we didn't know each other super well but at least we did know each other and we had we had some shared experiences out in boulder so that was cool and and i think what what also makes you unique you know comparing yourself to some other you know larger production companies is your flexibility i mean i know that w when we worked on uh drew and joan uh yeah. you weren't necessarily going to camp out there for a week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was yeah. but as the story evolved that's what need that's what needed to happen yeah. right so I, I think that's a you, you would agree that's a that, that that's an asset that you have that you bring to the table totally i mean just yeah going back to the job I, i'm fortunate that if need be I, I if i have a wi-fi connection i can do my job effectively and that's that has allowed me to have some really fantastic experiences i'm not geographically locked and so i do think i want to bring this up because to me it's such a cool story about fate and just what is the term um serendipitousness um, yeah there you go yeah so i have a i bought a camper van at the start of the you know, pandemic sometime in january 2021 i think okay um and i've you know i've toured it all over all the country kind of do it going on these trips that come up and i was driving north to uh from tucson to colorado and i get this i drew hunter and i are both from the same area in northern virginia um and we we see each i mean obviously we live very far apart so it's like every few months, maybe once or twice a year, we'll reconnect, go for a run. Um, and we had plans to get dinner in, in Boulder. And that day, I get a call from uh, Ryan, who's who's working with marketing at Pacers. Marketing director Ryan Callahan, yep. You know, out of the blue, saying, hey, do you know this guy, Drew Hunter? Like, <laughs> do you have any interest in making a video about him? <laughs> so, you know, we can talk about it. I'm actually going to his house right now. Um <laughs> So yeah, I think we could do something here. So just the timing of it was incredible. I was driving to to Boulder to see Drew when, when I got the call to make that first video. Um, and yeah, from I, I didn't have plans really to stick around, but that's what ended up happening. And that flexibility, I wasn't on like a corporate timeline of like, all right, we have three days to do this shoot and we have to get this shot yeah. and this shot and this shot. I just ch laid back and relaxed. And, you know, I'm next thing I know I'm invited to... Uh, you know, the family birthday party um, <laughs> out of the blue. And that to me, that's which one of is my which great shots. content. Yeah, it was it's great. My, content. One of my favorite shots is like yeah. such an inside look at that family. Um, and they're treating me like, you know, one of their own. They're like, yeah, Yo, you want to come to the to the birthday party? And so just to have those, that's not something you can do when you're like a big time company team where it's more transactional and commercial. Right. Yeah. Uh, so. episode this is episode two, me. episode two sixty on Pace the Nation. Sorry, Julie. Uh, episode two sixty, drone, <laughs> Joan and Drew Hunter. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, Julie. <sighs> the plugs, the constant <laughs> plugs. Um, this is very much reminding me of the Ryan Fenton flow track days. Um, mm -hmm. So there's some, there's a little bit of couch crashing probably right. uh, 
but That's being it. flexible to be in the moment when things develop and when things happen. I mean, that's, it's something that is harder and harder to come by. Um, and I think being able to have that flexibility, having, having your RV, having your van traveling around the country, right. you know, picking up these stories. And the other thing I wanted to point out was, um, and I've learned this more recently that especially in the photography and videography space, it is extremely political. So this program that Sidious has put together um, to make way for young uh, content creators is really incredible because typically the understanding is that you're with one of four photographers at these events right. and you either like they get credentialed and they have like certain understandings inside yeah. the stadium Right. And it's, it is very political and it's very hard to get those credentials. Um, so just a shout out to you, but also shout out to Sidious Mag um, for kind of cutting through that because we all know that <laughs> the best content that's coming out at this point is all the young, like the yeah. 20 somethings and, and, the, you, and Johnny the teenagers. Said that. Yeah. yeah. It's like this, a totally different angle, totally different perspective. And then those relationships and um, the ability to storytell around it is, uh, is, is really awesome. But it's also a space that's really flooded um, because yeah, right. cameras are becoming less expensive. Like right. you can get really high quality um, production equipment mm -hmm. now for a lot less than you used to be able to. So the storytelling yeah. element becomes that much more significant. Can you tell a story? Because the equipment can do beautiful things, but can you tell a story? Um, so it's just really exciting, Johnny. Really, really. Thank you. You're reminiscent. Ryan Fenton used to crash on our couch, yeah. crashed on like my dorm room floor in, in Europe. Um, so yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a style that is uh, hard, um, but it certainly yields um, incredible moments and incredible stories. Well, yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to segue from that point um, to this, that this might, this whole world might not be happening if it wasn't for COVID. Like your generation is completely different. Like, you know, Ryan Fenton was, was trying to make this work uh, for flow track and did, and you know, Ryan, amazing, uh, amazing work. And flow track is such a great content provider for our sport, but you know, he wasn't able to work a full-time job where you can work mm -hmm. a full-time job. Yeah. People your age can work a full-time job. So I want you to talk a little bit about that. Where, where do you live? Like, where do you <laughs> oh live? That, well, you're going to have, I'm going to have trouble answering that one because yeah. there's a clear cut answer. Yeah. Um, but that's such a great point. And I think about it so often that the time that we're living in, uh, just who could have who could have predicted it and it's i go back uh, i think back to a book that i read called the four hour work week i mean mm -hmm. right right before covid was on anybody's radar and it inspired me to the the central premise was you know setting up a, a remote job where you can travel and you know do do both live a, live these interesting experiences but the the big kicker was like um that getting that remote agreement, which three mm -hmm. years ago, very rare. I mean, certainly not for an entry level employee, something that would be all that likely. And to me that I always held in my mind, I'd love to do that, but you got to get to that point that you could establish that remote job. And, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause everybody knows like that big piece when COVID hit, um, was accounted for like that. Everybody suddenly had that flexibility um of a remote job so despite you know i say it's a it's a it was a silver lining on a really yeah. tough situation but getting that opportunity to not be geographically locked was huge and for me is the reason any of this is possible um and so you know the last two years i've been so fortunate I, growing up in the northern virginia area like I was reluctant to just default to moving to DC because mm -hmm. it, I was like, there's so much out there. I want to at least know what, what this country and this world has to offer. And so, but I, your, I, your I, firm is in DC, right? Your job and job 10 years ago or five years ago, you would be reporting to work at, at your job here in yeah. DC. Yeah. Suit, suit and tie, tie at, yeah. as a management consultant at this big firm in DC. 
Right. And, you know, it's like oftentimes I talk about like qu quitting your job to go pursue your passion. I feel so grateful. I've been able to enjoy both and see success in both. Um, and it's just, it's a matter of, you know, str being strategic, making good use of time and making sure all your, 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 dot, your cross your T's and dot your I's, but like, it's definitely a lot more feasible than it was. And, um, it's just in such an interesting time. So where do I live? I, where do you live? Yes. I, where you know, are you I, currently right now? In right now. Backdrop, check us out on YouTube. You can see his home <laughs> office, whatever yeah. this home is. Centerville, Virginia is, okay. uh, where, where mom and dad live and awesome. I, I always find my way back here. It's, um, so I, you know, I'll go on these excursions and find my way back in Northern Virginia. And I, I do love Virginia, but I do, like I said, my van is currently parked at the Denver airport. Um, <laughs> I've, I've done that. I've done the, the airport parking with that. I've done it up in Seattle and Arizona, Albuquerque, like just, you know, let it, let it sit under a watchful eye um yeah for a few weeks or a few months but it's waiting for me whenever uh, whenever the next big fun uh, fun uh adventure uh presents itself so bands in denver i got you know at this point my wardrobe is like s spread out <laughs> everywhere so i have um seattle where spencer and a lot of my former teammates um are living um and i spent a few you know a good amount of time there i have a a bag there and um some of my gear so <laughs> it's, i got the seattle out, outpost accounted for and then uh, i spent some time in tucson this year so i have a box of stuff there so you wow. know it's all just over all over um yeah. do you but instead of renting a house you rent like storage space or parking spaces that's parking that's, spaces at airports that's yeah. really i like that tactic that's smart um, yeah Chris, 27 I want, bucks a month. It's, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's nothing, amazing. Not, that's your rent. rent. Yeah, yeah, that's your that's rent. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris, I, I want to bring up the fact that um, I also have a remote position. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very lucky and convinced Brooks to hire me in this remote role. But I'm still waiting to cash in on the go explore <laughs> the United States, go explore the globe part of the remote right. role. Yes. So. Maybe you and I can have a discussion about that. Here's after. the difference between you and I'm gonna Johnny. Go, I'm going to go you got tour three with Johnny. Kids. You got three kids. Three kids. He doesn't. That's, That's the true. big difference. <laughs> the big, big difference. And I think uh, when Johnny settles down with the kids, I think it'll uh, it'll change. But yeah. All right. I hear you, Julie. I hear you. I hear you. I'm taking notes over just here. Just waiting to cash in. I just yeah. Johnny gets to explore all the West, and I get to explore yeah. all of Clarendon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Clarendon's beautiful. Clarendon uh, is beautiful. It is. I gotta say, uh, I stopped into Pacers uh, two days ago when I went into the office. Um, nice. And you guys, I, you gotta have the, one of the best retail spaces in D, in the DC area. Like it's it. it's crazy. That beautiful. Yeah. You haven't. To all the listeners, if you haven't been, highly recommend yep. a visit at least to the, yep. uh, to the Boston. Beautiful location. window space. We've yeah. got, you know, we've got uh, beautiful fixtures, the shoe wall I'm really proud of. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, well. So, uh, yeah. So, check out the video, runpacers.com. You can also check it on a pace photo. Uh, it's Cooper is the name of the film. Um, so, uh, you know, what, what's 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 next? What are you working on? What can you tease us with? What are you doing? <laughs> Let me think. Um well, in the, in the short term, I'm looking forward to spending some time uh, back down in Charlottesville. I, Charlottesville, oh my gosh, it just, it, it, everywhere I go, it, it, I always come back to Charlottesville because there, there, there's something special about it. And um, I'm looking forward to being in, Octo in October doing some work uh, with the teams down there. They're hosting mm -hmm. ACCs. I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm a proud alumni. I love what they're yep. doing down there. And hopefully, um, you know, just work, do some work with the athletic department. So that's, that's what the next month looks like. Um, but I'll tell you my, my long-term goal that I, I am really excited about is figuring out uh, 2024 because mm -hmm. the credentialing for the Paris Olympics is due at, by the end of the year for, for Team USA. And you know, it, it, I don't know that it's going to, I don't know that there's a program this time that's going <laughs> right. to, uh, to, to cut through that red tape, but I'd, I'd really, I'm using the connect. I'm excited to kind of broach 
through the wonderful people I've been able to meet through this the last few years, see uh, if there's a way to get to Paris in 2024. And um, that's kind of what I'm focusing on for the next couple months. So yeah, that's, that's a lot. I'm thinking long term and short term. No, you got to, man. You got yeah, to. And I'm sure fun. there's people listening. Um, he is for hire. I've got some ideas for you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm afraid you're, you, this one was so good. I mean, Drew and Joan was great too. I'm afraid the friends and family rate might be lifted up. <laughs> just, just, re, just remember all that we've done for you. Yes. That's oh, all I want to say. Stop, stop. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. Um, well, I really am so grateful. I, I, you, you guys have always, Pacers has always done such amazing stuff. I mean, even if I, if we hadn't worked together in, with these videos, I mean, just the way you guys engage with the running community, I really respect and appreciate and thank you for letting us bring these these stories uh you know to the public i mean making it possible so yeah well we, we appreciate it well yeah. i think i think johnny if, if you've already changed your name from smith to pace <laughs> if you change it from pace to pacers yeah, yeah. right there's something there's, there. there's, there's some special <laughs> deals that might start yeah, yeah. i'll be your poster boy i'll, I'll be the mascot <laughs> <laughs> well um, it is it is pace and you can check them out on instagram uh, again pace uh, pace photo on instagram and then johnny pace one uh, great content. Give him a follow yeah. on both those. Cause I feel like that, that's where you put out most of your stuff is on, on yeah. Instagram. Um, and you'll, I'm sure put this video out. Um, we're recording here Friday video will be out. Uh, I, I believe Ryan and Megan are ready to rock with it on Monday. So as this show comes out, go check out runpacers.com or Johnny's, uh, platforms and you'll be able to check out the nine minute, uh, yeah. Cooper video. So, um, man, great to connect. Oh my God. Thank you so much, pleasure. man. It was, uh, it, it, it's, it's great, uh, to be working with you and I'm sure we'll have some more projects in the future, but, um, thanks for your time for, uh, for us and our pace, the nation audience. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I do, uh, I did want to re remember that this was, this is actually our second time doing this. I think, uh, I, right. I sat down with you guys, uh, at the, what is it? The old run Washington. Yeah. Um, if I could get audio of that, I, I, yeah, the run, all run Washington. We, we, you were part of the all run Washington team, um, which we, we gave out, uh, the top 64 kids gave, gave, um, acknowledgement or awards to the top 64 kids in preseason. So you're part of that. And I think we sat down mm -hmm. for, with a podcast at that event. So yeah, I'll have yeah, to dig up 14. Yeah, I'll have to dig up some um, <laughs> some of that audio. So it's great, it's great to be back. Thing. Thank you for having yeah. me back. <laughs> yeah, again. <laughs> there you go, Johnny. Uh, I all appreciate right, you guys so much. Thank yeah. you for all you do, and thank you for yeah. for the friendship. And I'm looking forward to, to what the future holds. So. More adventures Thanks. together. Thanks, brother. Yeah. yeah, no doubt, man. All right, it's Johnny Pace. He's a uh, Pace video. Uh, he joined us on Pace Nation. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Pace the Nation is brought to you by Pacers Running Stores. Pacers has five stores in Northern Virginia and DC. For the best running footwear, apparel, and gear, just stop by or schedule a virtual fitting with the best running experts in the business. Pacers Running exists to help as many people as possible through running. For every run, it's Pacers Running. All right, welcome back to the program and thanks again to our guy, Johnny Pace for joining us. Uh, Johnny, uh, is of course a Wahoo, but he's of pace, uh, photo and video. Uh, it's at pace photo on Instagram. So give him a follow instantly right now. Um, good dude. It was, you know what? I, I like the friendly competition you and I had, um, with them, but I, you know, who was more influential in his life? That's the real question. I think that's the title of our show this week. Who yeah. was more influential in your life? See, I you were influential early on, but I played the long <laughs> yeah, game. You did. I played the long game. So. Yeah. So, anyways, good dude. We'll check back great, in in doing, ten years. <laughs> he's doing great. Great work. He's awesome. He doesn't need yeah. us. He's he's no, doing he definitely doesn't some really cool definitely, stuff. Definitely doesn't. Um, all right, but Julie, before we close out the show, uh, you know, I miss having the banter between me and you. Um, you know, and it's, it's it may, maybe sometimes a little off subject, but that's fine. I think our audience enjoys some of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on, uh, around our house or with our life. Uh, I thought this one was interesting. Um, you have been traveling, so let's not totally misrepresent 
to the the audience that it's all the all about Chris Farley one, tour. The one trip I've taken in three <laughs> you months. Did. Yeah, you did. So you were in uh, you were in Seattle at, at on a work trip, and I was two here weeks ago. two weeks ago, and I was here recording the the last episode, great episode with Michael Ward in. So I've got uh, our producer Chris and I and Mike and uh, we're in the middle of the episode and you text me and you're like, call me. And I'm like, podcast, you know, real quick to the side. And then you call me and you're like, uh, call me right now. So, uh, that in that moment, my- in that moment, I was like, I don't care about your podcast or our, <laughs> it's podcast, our, podcast, our podcast that I'm not yeah. on that you're recording yeah. while I'm away in Seattle. Yeah. So tell me your side of the story as you were frantically trying to get in touch with me. So it was about eight o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and East coast time or West coast time, West coast time. Okay. So it was about 11 or so you were recording Mm -hmm. and I was walking from the hotel that I typically stay in. It's a downhill walk to get to headquarters. Yep. And I'm walking, I've got, um, a woman that I was going to meet from the community to talk about, um, you know, bridging the athletes that are on our pro team with a little bit more community engagement involvement, meeting her at this really cool bakery. And so I'm about to meet her and my phone rings and it says Mm -hmm. Arlington County public schools. Mm, Yeah. And I thought, well, that's not the phone call that I want. I've got two boys (laughs) in Arlington County schools. So I immediately answer and it's like, which one got their head hurt hurt, or which uh, one did some kind of thing in class. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, mind you, Paul fell off the back of his chair in, you know, preschool last year and was almost taken out in an an ambulance. So (laughs) right. Our, our boys are rough and mm-hmm. they like to be rough and have fun. So yeah. that was my first thought. Something happened, but it was an automated message. And the automated message said, um, it was an alert to let me know that James Farley had an inexcused <laughs> absence for the day. And I thought, well, that's interesting because <laughs> as far as I know, James Farley was supposed to be in school today. And so I start to panic that maybe my child didn't end up in school today. So that's why I started calling you. And meanwhile, you know, I'm doing the podcast. You're like, well, he can't be with his father. So, well, hold on. This is his father (laughs) that we're talking about. So Lord knows (laughs) what scheme is actually happening behind the scenes. Right. So you, I finally break through to you that you actually need to answer your phone. I was like, Chris, Mike, I gotta, I gotta take a break. Uh, Julie's saying our kid is not in school right now. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm like, you finally answer your phone and I'm like, where's James? You're like, he's in school. I was like, no, he's not. Cause I just got a call that he's not in school. So meanwhile, I had tried while I was trying to get a hold of you, I was also trying to call the school office and I Mm -hmm. couldn't get a hold of anybody. It was like a recording, a machine. So I'm like, please call me back. My son should be in school, you know, and so I'm trying to get a hold of you because I know that you're literally like half a mile up the road sure. and can go down to school and check and see what's going on. But first of all, I wanted to make sure he was actually in school. In school. So, I mean, there's wilder things have happened when I've been away. When you've been so gone. Mm-hmm. You're like, no, I dropped him off this morning. And I said, did you physically watch him walk into school? And you're like, yeah. I said, so you saw him walk through the door yes. and you're like, well, I think so. I mean, yeah, and you, and you, know, you give me I a hard time because you, you, you think I'm a white liar and I just, oh, you, you are know. a white liar. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so, totally. 100%. So I did wa- watch him walk in. Here's the, here's the thing though. It, it, with, you do the heavy lifting in the morning when our kids are going to school. So they were a little late, a little bit late. So he was just a little bit late, which threw everything off. But I watched him walk in with his friend, Omar. Okay. So what ended up happening was that he did, he, he was a few minutes late to school and there's a check-in process yes. when you're a few minutes late to school. Well, he was walking in with his buddy from his soccer team and they blew right past the office and then yep. they probably like looped around the school and then he eventually ended up in his classroom, but he had never checked in. Yep. So they had, uh, they immediately send this automated message. Which is good. So I have props to Arlington County. I I appreciate that. But I did go, met with them in the office, and I said, 
is James Farley here? And they said, yes. So everything was fine. So problem solved. The funny part was um, reconnecting with his teacher uh, a week later. So I ended mm -hmm. up going to pick him up last Friday from school. And she was like, hey, so were you out of town last week? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, why? She goes, yeah, I had a feeling. Um, James usually comes to school with like his lunch mm -hmm. and his hair combed and his glasses cleaned. And last week he came to school late every day with no disheveled. <laughs> and completely disheveled hair and foggy glasses. Yeah, we're and working oh, on by that. the way, we asked him to bring a pair of headphones and we sent an email. We asked him to bring a pair of headphones to school so he can use it for because the, the children have iPads that they do mm -hmm. some academic work on. Yep. And he rolls into school with a pair of Beats Pro <laughs> headphones, which are like three hundred dollars and they were dead. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was out of town. That's and on me. That was Chris. So yeah. the, the, the even I think there will be some people who appreciate this. It's so difficult for you to get the lunches ready that the mornings then become a four hour process for you. So you yes. wake up and you get the one to school by 750 ish. Yes. And you get the other one to school by nine ish. And mm -hmm. then you go home and make the lunches and then drop them off to each respective school. Correct. Because they're in different there. schools. Yep. Yeah. That's the that's the morning. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's it. Unbelievable. Uh, maybe you should go on vacation more and not be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> All you right. Set yourself up for that one. So yeah, I did set myself up. I did. I wanted to talk about that. So. Uh, Anyways, all right. Uh, but you know what? Props to Chris, the stoner. He did a, uh, a seamless edit, as he'll do on a couple of these spots. So no one knew that I had that I'd gone, and then I'd gone and checked on him, come back, and then uh, finish the interview with uh, with 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 Mike. So uh, anyway, so it, it, all's well that ends well to me. At least that's what, <laughs> that's my mantra. All right. This is episode 280. We've gotten to 280, Julie. Unbelievable. Uh, Pace the Nation. Uh, thanks again to our guest today. Awesome stuff from our guy, Johnny Pace. Uh, check out Story 6 on RunPacers.com. Uh, story, the film, is Cooper. I think it's really, really well done. So uh, I'm really proud of it. Really proud of Johnny and what he's done. So check that out. Uh, and maybe even, Julie, you can check. Maybe I'll send it to you before... Uh, Thanks, so you can Chris. see it. <laughs> so you can see it. But it was uh, really, really well done. All right. For Chris behind the scenes, for Julie Cully, I'm Chris Farley. This is Pace Nation. We will see you next time. When you climb